Welcome back everyone to Automation Days Asia 2023. So this is track two. My name is Jeremy and I'll be the host for this, for this particular session. I'm happy to welcome our next speaker, Fabrice, who is the CTO from M Secure Southeast Asia. Today he'll be talking about building a comprehensive and user IT desktop automation solution. With that, Fabrice, I'll pass the session to you. Hi, good morning to you all. Let me share my screen. Presenting entire screen. Okay. Hopefully, you should all be seeing my screen. Voila. So, as I was saying, good morning to you all. I'm uh, Fabrice, the CTO of Evrem. Uh, one second for my background. I'm very technical, 25 years career. Mostly a hacker. Uh, I've always automated. Uh, anything I could do since 25 years ago, and I'm a die-hard Linux fan. I've been a CISO in uh, in two large organizations and CTO for most of my career. So today I'm going to talk about how we can uh, automate the end user journey on the desktop. A lot of solutions for server automation, a lot of automation everywhere, RPA, but very few are automating the management and operation of a desktop for the enterprise. I will try to keep this short. In any case, uh, we don't have much time. We only have half an hour. So I thought that I would give you some uh, advice and, and some bear trap, some advice to avoid bear traps, as opposed to give you a full-blown um, solution, since it wouldn't be possible in just half an hour. It's years of, of work. So um, first, why should you invest in your end users? In my career, I've noticed that uh, a lot of time in, in IT or information security, IS, the end user is, is pretty much left aside. People bother mostly about the servers and so on. Well, your end users uh, are the one making you the money for your company. Successful companies, as you can see here in purple, are those who invest in their end users and those end users end up bringing in the bulk of the revenues. So it's very important that we look after them. And for the purpose of our topic today, we want to look after them IT-wise. We want to empower them. We want to make sure that they have the tools they need in order to work. So let me ask you this. Is this something like this in your company? Hopefully not. I've seen this countless time. I used, I forgot to mention, I used to be a consultant for 10 years as well. So I've seen a lot of companies and how they run IT and uh, I used to pull my hair. Um, so this is a typical case that I've seen in most companies, including the large, large ones. Uh, you would be surprised. IT focus mostly on the, on the top level people where there's the fewest of them, and uh, the frontline workers and transactional users, which is the bulk of your workforce, is left behind. Um, and they can't really do their work. IT is not really working. So hopefully your company is not really like this. Sometimes it's more like a diamond shape. Um, but yeah, everywhere I've seen, the frontline worker and transactional users are not being taken care of by IT. And let's face it, computers today have not changed. You know, I, I had my first computer in 84, except for the specs of the, the CPU and, and so on. It's pretty much the same. The OS is still for one person. Of course, your OS is multi-user, but it's not managed centrally. It's standalone by default. It comes with no apps or very few. I don't count MS Paint as an app, nor Solitaire. And uh, it's managed by the user. You are king of your laptop which for the enterprise is a big problem. Um, but typically 30 years on, 40 years on, uh, it's still the same as it used to be. You still need an IT team. You cannot do without it. So it's pretty sad. But are you ready for the future? Because the future is already here. You've noticed this during COVID. Um, people are working remotely. IT team have, have, are facing issues to manage people remotely. Sure, there are plenty of tools, VPN, agents, and so on. But how do you deal with high staff turnover, people leaving the company, joining the company? How can you support them remotely? 
uh, and how much time do you spend doing this? How big is your IT team just to, to barely manage? And of course, there's the security part of it. Um, most of the breaches these days happen on end user laptops. It starts like this, and then they go to the servers and start encrypting data. And there you have it, those data leaks that you see on the news all the time. So IT team and IS team right now are facing huge uh, issues with management of desktop for the users, especially in the distributed workforce. There are plenty of solutions, but we find at Everend that most of them are not really ready. This is why we started our company. So quick question, is, is your company a company where you have corporate anarchy? So some companies, there are two, two cases typically. This is the first case. A lot of startups and SMEs just don't have a solution to manage end user IT. And that leads to a tremendous amount of problems. Um, people have no idea what's going on in the company. So when you're five to 10 people, it's not really an issue, or is it? But as soon as you get to 50, it's, uh, it becomes impossible. When you have no solution to manage your IT, to automate it and to centralize it, you have issues of asset management, everybody is running different stuff, the user is frustrated, nothing works, they can't, they can't have the apps they need, you have licenses issues, and of course, compliance and security is non-existent, which leads to a lot of uh, security issues, as well as a loss of productivity because your guys are just not working. Or are you part of a larger company uh, that use some sort of solution? In which case I like to call it the uh, corporate dictatorship. So I've seen some large companies where they have a, a string of agents, about a dozen agents running on the laptop, slowing it down and, um, and having end users super frustrated. Sure, so now there is some form of asset management, there is some form of security for the company, but uh, we still, the user is still not efficient. There's no option, it's not customizable. The user is missing software that he needs or she needs. Uh, support is slow. Um, basically, yeah, you have a super high, huge cost of management as well. You need um, very big IT teams and, and they suffer. The IT teams suffer, the end users suffer. So the best way to do it is to design a fitting solution. So this is a general uh, graph, you, I mean, a, a general solution. You, you've seen this before. Um, this is how you start any kind of project. I don't want to spend too much time, but all I want to say is because we are in automation field, you have to, uh, you have to be careful because bad decisions get automated too. So some of these, you have to spend more time. And I would say as a quick one, you would have to spend more time on monitoring and support um, so that you can detect if or when your automation goes wrong. <clears throat> so first bear trap, the first thing that people forget when it comes to uh, end user IT is the actual end user. It's unbelievable. It's been 30 years and the end user still doesn't have what they need. Whichever technique you use, typically the, at the conception stage, the end user is almost always forgotten. IT decide for them all. Oh, the user is going to need this, this and that. That's it. End of story. No need to talk to the user. The user is ignored. So please don't do this. This is the, the step one of, of the project and it's already poorly done most of the time. Another, another way to approach it is I've seen, uh, and I still see a lot of uh, IT and IS management who want to change the word one shot. So one shot, they want to replace everything in the company. Don't do this. Start with a small pilot, carefully selected, carefully targeted. Um, so start with a small population, probably on the uh, frontline worker, as I mentioned, the uh, reverse triangle earlier on, they get the least love, so you will get a bigger impact there. And uh, this way, smaller changes are quicker, uh, quicker to succeed, quicker to fail, quicker to iterate, and you get results faster. And this one is a nice tip. I've used it extensively in the past. This, this is a game changer. It's so simple, but you guys are not doing this. Um, this is also true of a regular project, of course, but especially important in automation uh, of desktop because 
once you automate, uh, it is for everyone and very fast. Send in some questionnaire. Why don't you just ask the user what they really need? The issue when you have a whole department, uh, let's say a warehouse, you don't know, they are far away, you don't know what they do. You have a rough idea based on the job title, but that's not enough. So send them questionnaire, talk to them, perform interviews. You can do some research. What, what do, if I take the example again of a warehouse worker, what do they do in a warehouse actually with a computer? And of course, uh, listen, if people want to talk to you, maybe set up a special email address or uh, indicate where the IT office is so people can just walk in. This sounds like a grandma advice, but this makes the whole difference. Of course, this one is true of every project as well, plan and evangelize. You need to make sure that people are aware of the change uh, so that they can participate, so that they can talk, so that they are aware and so that they can give feedback early. And in the end, it will, it will give you better end user needs. Any end user needs that you forgot will be voiced to you uh, during the evangelization time. So the most important, just like any other project, is the success factor. This is how you measure if you've done a good job or not. So we're going to look quickly at all the success factors that are important when you do uh, end user desktop automation project. Of course, we will have the end user themselves, but they are not alone. You also have IT and information security team as well as the company. So for the end user, it's pretty much straightforward. It's pretty much what you think it is, except again, it's not being done most of the time properly. The end user only cares about a few things. Uh, if I start from the bottom, what they want is they want the machine to always work. They want to never have to talk to IT if possible. And they just want to do their work. They are here to do work, right? So the machine must be ready with the apps installed. The data must be accessible. The connectivity must just work. The printers must be installed and pre-configured. Basically, what you want is for the user to do nothing IT related. It's not their job. They should not have to do it. They want no friction as well. It needs to be easy to use, relatively fast or fast enough. Security must already be done for them. Basically, they're not IT pro. Again, they shouldn't do any IT. Now, a tricky one, uh, especially these days, uh, it needs to work online and offline. So if the network goes down uh, or the network is bad, it needs to continue working. And remember, the network always goes down, even when you have good connectivity. And of course, when there is a problem, the user wants quick help. They want a team behind to, to make sure the problems get fixed fast. Now, the IS success factor is, uh, is uh, easy. Most of you are working in IT, so you will know. Um, an IT management will care that it's inter operable so that it works with whatever you've already invested in. Uh, it needs to work with the existing ecosystem, the procedures. We're not going to change the procedures just for this new project. And it should have open standards, basically, so it's easier later to integrate and manage. Uh, it needs to be secure. Uh, otherwise, uh, IS will complain. So the usual list privilege, hardened from the start, audit log, all your usual security features. Now, more than ever, it needs to support remote management um, because you cannot work without it. Even in an office when you have 10,000 endpoints, you will need remote management. It needs to be fully automated and centrally managed. And of course, the most important, it needs to be in the correct state. Uh, what IT or IS configure, once it's configured, it should not change. The software needs to be idempotent to always put it back, and you need to have proper monitoring. In a nutshell, what IT and IS want is that the machine always works, that it's always secure. And of course, they want to do the least maintenance and day-to-day -day work as possible. Once it's set, it's set and it just works. The company success factors are the easiest, but often forgotten. It needs to be strategic, so easy to jump in or easy to jump out if you no longer want the solution. So it needs to be using open standard to be to be to avoid any kind of lock-in, right? It needs to be efficient so that the workforce can work faster and, and it just works. And obviously the two biggie, it needs to be cost effective and secure. 
But what's the issue today is that the current tooling is uh, pretty appalling. It's not been making any any sway for so many years. So we, we're going to look at a few strategies that uh, CIOs are employing right now. And sometimes they use a combination of those. And I'm going to go super quick on this because it's uh, boring tables like this. It's more interesting uh, to read this later. I've put a lot of bullets here on all of them on the file solution. It's just for your offline reading later on. Uh, just to remind you, you have a hands out at, uh, on the bottom, on, on the right of your screen for later. So the golden image, uh, remember, if you don't remember what it is, is uh, you set up the OS once, you make a ghost image, and then you install this ghost image on any new laptop that comes in. That allows you to have a software already pre-configured, pre-installed, and so on. So for the end user, well, at least they don't have to install it themselves. It's better than a 10 people SME when you have to do it all by yourself. Uh, it's a full OS, so it works online, offline. For IT, it's good because it's repeatable. It always does the same. It's battle tested. People have used it for years. And of course, uh, it's relatively cost effective. It's uh, you buy the software once and, and whatever. But to, as you can see, the, the drawbacks, the cons are, are very numerous. So I'll just say it's very slow. Uh, it's very, uh, you, you cannot change things easily. It's really a pain. And of course, the user is missing half the things because you have to make a few golden image. And if you have like 10 different departments, you have 10 uh, golden image that multiplies too quickly. So IT doesn't, they have only three, and that's not good enough. So now you can start this as a base and have some agents to remote configure. That's what I call the golden image and agent strategy. That's a lot better, a lot, a lot better. Uh, but to cut the story short, it's also a lot more expensive um, because your agents will cost you a fortune. And you still have some issues of, with the golden image because it's still slow and still difficult to, to keep up to date. Now, the, my absolute favorite, the off-the-shelf automation strategy. So off-the-shelf automation is any kind of software that, uh, that is purely for automation. So you, you have a lot that you already know. You have Terraform, you have Salt, you have Puppet, you have Chef, you have plenty also on, on purely on Windows and so on. Um, they're all very good. They all have little quirks here and there, but those are easy. Um, for the end user and so on, no difference. They just get the finished product. It just works. Um, so let me just go to the cons. Typically, you need an IT team that's not an IT team. They need to be developers. They need to understand exactly how, how things work, and they need to write code uh, to make it happen. But this is still the best uh, strategy. If you're embarking on a strategy today, I would recommend you do that um, because it is an investment, but a very high return uh, if you succeed. Of course, you have the VDI strategy. You can decide to put everything on VDI and voila, everything is secure. So the, the pros are very good. I mean, it's secure, it just works, everything is configured, it's uh, reachable from anywhere. But the cons are also equally huge. The, the price is unbearable for most companies. And during uh, COVID, uh, companies who had VDI and tried to scale it up to, to manage all the employees really saw some pain point on the network choking, uh, and of course, the licenses cost. Uh, most of the CIOs I talked to during COVID were screaming about this. It was, it was way too much. You can use mobile and tablet, the prime mobile and tablet, in a nutshell again, please read this data, but it's just not the same apps. So your user will complain, it will not work. Try to run, for example, Excel on a tablet, and very quickly you're going to stop. So, we define the success factors that are pretty common to every project, uh, but now let's have a look at how we meet those with automation for the desktop. Uh, so we're going to talk about security, assets, performance, operation, process, and people. Of course, operation and experience, uh, excellence has a lot more things, but for the, for the purpose of our talk, we will focus on those only. I will talk about security later on its own section because it's ever so important, but let's just say that you need to start with security. Uh, if you don't, you fail. It's game over. Because it's very hard to add later on. You will not manage and you will not do it. And then it's failure already. So keep in mind, start with security. We'll talk about security later. 
Uh, asset management is key. Everywhere I, I go, I always see asset management being not done, poorly done, or not uh, not properly usable. So uh, right here, what you need absolutely, absolutely to have, of course, there's a lot more. Um, you need to have asset management. You need to know what you're running. Otherwise, you cannot manage. Otherwise, you cannot secure it. Um, asset management helps you answer the question, what do I have? and what's running on it, right? A lot of time asset management is uh, is missing some of the stuff. So on the Windows side, for example, the asset management does properly system packages, application packages a bit less well, uh, but typically you're missing some of the stuff. This is basic asset management, but what you want is maximum asset management. This is not good enough what you just saw. What you want is the firmware version. You have firmware uh, issues these days with security issues with your firmware. How do you know which firmware is where? Most solutions don't give you that. Drivers update as well. Uh, your board information. Um, but most importantly, I would say is USB device and Bluetooth device. This is critical for security later on. And guess what? If you gather those properly, this will help uh, IT and information security team in troubleshooting or doing investigation if required. Your performance matter as well. A lot of those automation uh, software or, or fleet management software do not monitor properly performance or at least don't alert you with it. So if you do your own, same, ensure, ensure you, ma you monitor all these performance uh, metric, usage loads, services, services down or up. You have a lot of services running on your machine. As, and of course, the network is pretty busy. You want to answer the question, how well is the machine running? But again, you guessed it, this is not enough. This is basic. You can find this almost everywhere. What you really want is, uh, is to do proper performance. Proper performance is, starts with good health. How many uh, remote management software check the health of your hard disk, the smart status? If, uh, if your disk is failing, you will have a smart status issue, and you should change. Uh, the hard is now before the user loses data and so on. Monitor system crashes. Every system will, will have uh, software crashing. It happens. It cannot be avoided. Are they monitored? They need to be monitored. Um, check for RAM errors. I, I don't see people doing this yet. They should. It's, it's very common when you have 10,000 laptops to have RAM errors. Trust me. And of course, your, your CPU and temperature and, and fan. When a fan fails, your CPU will get hot, the machine will get slow, and eventually the machine will stop working. Again, you can avoid all this if you monitor properly. All right, this is where the automation is. Uh, you need all this in your automation, absolutely. Uh, you will see why later, because it's important for security. You need your identity, so bind to AD if you have AD, LDAP if you don't but at least you should have LDAP. Otherwise, you need to manage uh, local accounts centrally. Uh, this is less good, but if you have no choice, it's, it's OK. Um, your solution needs to absolutely install uh, apps and, uh, and, and uh, system subsystems, but also the updates, the app updates. We'll talk about this more later. You need to be able to configure everything for the end user. As I said, the end user should not have to configure anything. They are not IT guys. They are here to do their work and to go home later to their family. So you need to configure all of these. Again, sometimes some solutions do half of that. Most of the time, it's uh, one or two only. And of course, configure the end user desktop itself, the look and feel, the menus, as well as some of the security policies like your screen saver and, and, and screen locker and so on. The machine needs to be configured from a central point. Uh, but again, what I mentioned is just pure, uh, pure uh, automation and pure configuration. Um, most of the solution I see, including the, the off-the-shelf one that you can program yourself, they forget that the user is king. Uh, a lot of time, people do automation like they would on a server. On a server, you don't have an user. That's the big difference. Here. We are doing it for an end user. The end user will use the product of what we, of what we toiled for. So if the desktop is unusable or not to the user's liking, there's going to be a problem. The tip here is that you do not want to override settings that the user is allowed to set by policy. 
And very often I see people to simplify just overwrite and that will give you a world of pain. What you want instead, if you're programming your own solution using off the shelf automation is to create instead of a set the setting to have three operation Add the setting. If it wasn't there before, remove the setting. If it was there before or make it exactly like this, which is equi equivalent to the set uh, operation, this tree operation will change everything. Uh, it makes it a lot more difficult to implement, but it allows you for greater flexibility, greater balance. And of course, uh, you balance the homogeneity versus uh, chaos where the user just set everything by themselves. See the time. OK. Uh, if you do your own automation, or even if you use commercial tools, um, Beware of this. I've seen it a million times. I still see it today. The, the time bomb. So when you do a, a change uh, or when there is an update on your OS or uh, if you have a scheduled uh, task, you get the, the clock issue. Let's say you're, you do a, a scheduled task uh, every day at 4 a.m. At 4 a.m., everybody connects and there will be a DOS, basically your network bottleneck and uh, your server overload. So try to spread them out um, instead of having everything at the same time. This is typical, and I see very few uh, automation tools doing that right. There, there are a few, though. The other one is, uh, especially in the, in the region, make sure that your solution is working on bad network, and you need to test it, because bad network is the norm. If, uh, if your solution doesn't manage a network drop, then it's unusable. So try to answer these questions for yourself. What happens if your network goes down halfway? What happens if you were downloading a package that was, I don't know, 300 meg and the connection fails? Do you retry or do you retry from the beginning? If you retry from the beginning, I will never manage to download those 300 megs. So you need to resume and so on. Another tip as well is, of course, implement per service, uh, some uh, network threshold, uh, throttle, sorry, maximum speed. Don't do it at the machine level, of course. Do it inside your code. Sorry, I'm going very fast. I'll give you more time for the question. Um, on the process, of course, this is where it matters. We need to configure the policy. One important part I want to insist on is the self-service. End user must have the self-service of an opportunity to install apps that are not installed as long as it goes, uh, as long as it doesn't go against the policy. They need to be able to install their own printer when they work from home and their own Wi-Fi. Um, for this to work properly, you need to be uh, able to have a very good change management, be able to revert unsection changes and so on, and of course implement approval process uh, in case a user wants an app that is not in there and so on. It's time consuming to do, but in the end, you will ensure that the machine are exactly as they should be and any change is done cleanly and audited. Um, this one is critical. Your browser runs everything. So this is the tip for the, sorry, for the process part. Make sure you have browser policies and you manage browser extensions. This is important for management and it's important for security. Browser extensions, in my mind, are the easiest way to leak your data today. Uh, so please configure properly in your solution. Make sure that you build the part that uh, monitors which extension are installed and where. And finally, remember it's people first, right? Uh, you have IT is for users to use it. So make sure your support is there, that you have a ticket management system. Again, this should be built into your automation solution. I was not showing you a typical IT department here because IT department have all this. This is supposed to be all automated. Uh, you need to monitor as well which application I use, which uh, website the, the user is trying to visit. All of this is important so that you can do proper support. You need to know roughly where your guys are working from. So again, for support. And of course, if you can allow uh, HR to do some push notification to the desktop, that is the cream. Make sure that your employees are close to the, to the company uh, so they feel included even when they work remotely. 
Now, the tip for this section is, of course, asset management-based supports. Honestly, this one, I see quite a lot uh, of solution doing that. that. That part is a good part so far. Um, but still, it's missing some of it. You, all solution I've seen so far do not gather error logs. So when IT is trying to, to manage what's going on on the machine, they have to remote connect. They cannot do it from their own machine by looking at the logs, by looking at connected device. Uh, user call you, the printer is not working. Which printer? What's the model? You should not even have to ask this. It should it should be automatically done for you by the solution you're writing. It should know which which printer is connected to the network or not, and so on. Let me see the time. Yes, I need to hurry. Um, so as I was saying, information security is critical. You can see the 12th domain of ISO 27K on the left. You have to implement all that uh, in the IS department. Uh, remember, I was a, I was a CISO twice. Um, information security is wide, is deep, is painful. But for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of this topic, a great part of this is your end user environment, which is for our purpose the end user desktops or laptops, and it is really the most vulnerable. I would say, in in my opinion, at least eighty percent of the hacks happen this way and they don't get detected. So we'll start with the basic security principles. I'm gonna go quick because they're very straightforward. There is a, a military technique called keep it simple and stupid. So the idea behind this is the easiest it is, the least issues you will get with it, uh, less chance for error, which means less chance for security issues. Least privilege is giving only the user what he or she needs, no more, no less do that job, this is very important. RBAC is role-based access, so to simplify your management of, uh, of uh, authorization, you group them in group and manage them at the group level. And AAA is the cornerstone, is authentication, to verify who's, uh, who is doing what operation. Authorization is the user authorized to perform that, that, uh, that action. And accountability uh, to keep a log of who perform what and when. And our biggest challenge, as I said, the end user. The end user is really the issue and also our goal. End user are not IT savvy. And they are not information security savvy. But the worst of the worst is when they think they are. Because they're even more dangerous. They will bypass what you said. They will think they're smarter than you. And typically, even if they're not malicious, they will work against the company just to have it the way they want it. Uh, it makes it very dangerous. So make sure that the user should never have to do IT tasks and worse, and even better, do not allow them to do it. That's it. Just don't give them the privilege to do IT, because if you do, it will break. Your solution needs to be secure by default. I, see, I still see uh, people deploying laptops without full disk encryption. We're in 2023, please. It should be by default. It needs to be backed in the Trust Platform module and the key in as Crow. The identity needs to be centralized. Uh, authorization needs to be limited by list privilege. And of course, enable all the audits that you can enable. Those are very hard to change later. Please do it from the start. As for the full disk encryption, I'm smiling to myself because uh, I see a lot of banks and uh, and a lot of companies having uh, done FDE for this encryption, and then they, they are very happy. They tap themselves on their back, but it's not done right. To do it right, you have to do it in TPM. That they do. But you have to lock the TPM, and that half the time they don't. So keep this in mind. Look at those slides again later when you implement your solution. Make sure you lock your TPM, otherwise it is useless. Uh, and it's very easy to get the key, uh, even more insecure that way, if you don't lock it. Identity done right, uh, it's the same. So you all know about uh, Active Directory and LDAP. I don't want to talk about it, but make sure you enable strong ciphers. Now, uh, you always need a, a non-privileged user per laptop. Make sure it's unique. I always see people not having a unique one. That's not good. Make sure your solution make it unique and the password is rotated. Same for the admin password. Admin or root password needs to be unique and rotated per machine. Uh, Passwords must always have a time to live. A password is never forever. It needs to be rotated. It needs to be monitored. Uh, 
and this is the success defining tip the most important part of this whole uh of, of this whole presentation do not i repeat do not give admin right to your users today you give admin right to your user because you have no choice the solution that you have does not let you do for example application update um, system update is done, Microsoft fixed it, then it's always had it, and so on. Application updates are your problem, so make sure you find a solution for that. Uh, and for your developers, so your developers today, they want a Mac, why? So that you don't control them, right? So that they can be king of their kingdom, and they can install whatever they want, and they just want the freedom. So make sure uh, your solution supports that, the user is never admin, and yet all the updates happen and everything is configured for them and uh, they are babysitted fully but without them feeling uh, cornered because they still have option remember once you give uh, <laughs> admin privilege to a user it's like you just gave a gun to a kid it's it will go wrong logs needs to be in json only because all your tools will use JSON later on, your SIEM, your log management. Uh, so all the machines need to generate logs and need to be pushed uh, and need to be uploaded in real time or in batch. It's critical for a lot of things. Sorry, I have to go fast. I'll let you read later. Security policies, uh, you guys know about this, need to be enforced, but they need to be enforced regularly. So have something item potent that can uh, verify if they have been changed and, and change them back. And of course, notify if that's the case. Your logs need to be auditable. That I very seldom see, and it should be like this. When uh, there was a change, what was changed? Please tell me. It needs to be logged. Um, activity needs to be logged as well. Who plugged what? There was a USB device plug. What was it? And uh, one of my favorites, uh, is of course to generate reports automatically for the auditor. I don't like auditor coming to me and asking me for data requests, but it is their job, they have to do it. I respect their job, I just don't like to take time to do this. So this should be automated. That's the first thing you automate like this, you keep everybody happy. And my last random advice before we can do questions, um, is never copy paste example from the web when you do your own automation. The example on the web are almost 99% uh, lacking error checking. And most of the time don't have the proper permission or they are, they are too easy. So of course they don't, they're not enterprise ready in other words. Uh, another advice is use standard, open standard as much as possible. Like this, you are not locked in. And if you use a solution that does not have API, well, move away from it, don't use it. APIs allow you to integrate with everything that you have in your corporation today. And vendors should not tell you what you should have or not have in your corporation because you already have the investment. Corporations should be here to help you integrate them with their API. So that's why APIs are critical. Sorry, I rushed through uh, everything. I think we are ready for questions. Yes, uh, Fabrice, thank you for taking us through. Let me allow me to uh, project the questions that we have on screen. So the first questions that we have from our attendees is asking. Uh, I can't hear you anymore. Oh, okay. Sorry. How do you recommend? How do you recommend organizations approach the transition from a manual process? to automated IT desktop solution? I think that's the first question. And following that, so, are there phase implementation strategies that you would recommend? Yeah, so that's a that's an excellent question. Uh, yeah. I'm very glad to, to hear it. Um, the most important part is to not go big bang. Mm. So the first thing you do is that you don't tell your CIO, look, uh, CIO, I'm going to yeah. change everything. Mm. Uh, he will die. So what you do is you start with, you identify a small area in your company where you will have the biggest impact. Right. Typically, uh, I'll tell you right now, what's the biggest impact? Your frontline worker. So your warehouse worker, yes. your, your clerks, people staying in front of the desk. <clears throat> they deal, uh, your, know your customer, your calls, uh, tech support, your call, uh, your call, caller, uh, 
So both, yep. all these guys have customer information and yet they have no IT love. It means their machine are always the, the lowest grade. Uh, nobody spend IT money on those guys. Correct, and, correct. Uh, and yeah, because they keep on changing. So you want to focus on the frontline worker. Even frontline worker, identify one department first. For example, let's say your call center. Mm. And even within your call center, you, you start a project with, let's say, five machines out of 200. Yes. You try, you iterate fast, you succeed fast, you fail fast, but you must iterate fast. And this is how you, this is how you get started. And this is how you get uh, immediately some, uh, some feedback and some, uh, and some results. That would be the, the biggest uh, advice. After this, you can refer back to the slide that I've had, which show you the, the full path. Mm. But again, that's the full path of any project. Uh, the success in automation is to start slow. Because once it works well, uh, small, it scales because it's automated. Correct. So there's no scalability issue. And remember, when you automate, you automate the good and you automate the bad. <laughs> so you need to absolutely verify that it works, works, and works. Because if it doesn't, you will uh, you will automate uh, the error everywhere. Correct, correct. So I, be I, very be very careful with this. Yeah. I hope it answers your question. Yep, I, I think it does, especially when you have a large organization uh, in the sense where you have tens and thousands of uh, machines, right? You you definitely see that error being magnified very quickly in that scenario. Uh, actually, Absolutely. actually during your presentation, a lot of the stuff that you mentioned, I think are very practical advice that a lot of our attendees can actually look at. Allow me to go to the next question very quickly. Mm -hmm. Let me project that very quickly for us. Can you provide insight into the automating audit reports? I think at the last part, you did mention about audit. Ah, I'm glad people like this one as well. Yes. So, so what are the, the only way key elements that organizations should focus on to meet the security compliance requirement on the audit? So report? those are two, uh, two different yeah, questions. Two different so for the, to be able to generate audit reports, you need to gather the data and keep this data. So I'll give you an example of audit report. The auditor will come to you and say, please show me proof that your server were, or your desktops yep. were following the SLA, which means they were, uh, they were patched within two weeks because yep. that's the SLA that IS has given. So what you need to do is to keep the states before and after the patch and the dates so that you can show, you can prove of course, you do it programmatically, but you can prove when was the patch installed and for how long was it uh, non-patch and show that this is within the SLA. So again, to for the first question, to to do the automated audit report, you have to know what the auditor will ask. Very simple. You can ask them in advance. Yep. And then you have to keep the data in order to generate the report. The biggest difficulty here, keep the data. <laughs> Trust me, this is the part that you're not doing today. That's why you cannot do the, uh, the automation of a report. It's quite easy after this to write code to, uh, to automate the reporting. Okay. Now for the second part, uh, what are the key elements the organization should focus on to meet the security compliance? Oh, this is a huge, huge question. Mm. Uh, the key components, uh, yeah, there's too, there are too many, there are too many. Um, I would say, yeah, at, at least on the end user laptops, what you really want is, uh, is the least privileged principle mm. and never give the admin to the user. If you do this, you're more or less in control. You have an unbroken chain of AAA, uh, in which case the, you can do proper audit reports uh, automated. Uh, if, you, if you give admin to the user or the admin is user, the user is admin by default, you will not be able to implement anything else uh, security-wise. Security is like a pyramid. You start with least privilege, then you build on top of it. I, I feel you because I, I used to work for an organization uh, that uh, administrator or local admin was given to the user, and it was a real nightmare and a exactly. really an uphill battle, right? It took us, I think, almost what, a period of six to seven years to turn it around to say that mm -hmm. we need to take back control from IS perspective, we need to lock it down because we were getting uh, outbreaks of ransomware, virus attack, and all that sort of even data loss, right? Yeah, to turn it around. Right, we still have one more question, uh, Fabrice. Let me just quickly sure. bring that online so we can actually talk a little bit more on it. Uh, the next question is, in your opinion, what are the key indicators of a successful corporate IT desktop automation implementation based on that? Well, I would say uh, the, the, the most important is that the success factors are met. So mm. 
if I if I um, if I summarize, it would be the user is happy and productive. Right. IT is uh, happy and productive and has less work to do mm -hmm. with regards to this part of the project. Right. And of course, uh, the company is happy because it's affordable and uh, and enhance the, the productivity of both end users and IT team. Okay, that's very, very good advice in that sense. Fabrice, we thank you so much for your guidance and sharing of the top process in this specific topic itself. Uh, it's really, really, uh, I, I would say, enriching for me and hopefully for the rest of the audience. Uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, just to let the participant know, coming up in the next hour, we do have the upcoming panel discussion. Uh, do join us then in the next session for the upcoming panel discussion on this specific topic, automation and AI. AI are they allies or adversaries? So that will be an interesting topic. Again, Fabrice, really appreciate your, you spending time with us in sharing your thought leadership here. Uh, I really, really learned a lot of stuff from you as well. I hope your audience also feel that way. Again, thank you for your time, Fabrice. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Take care, everybody. All right.